Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at PZ Linux. It's P-I-S-I. -I. I'm going to pronounce it PZ, so that way I don't get in trouble pronouncing it the wrong way. But before we get started, please don't forget, like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. If you download PZ Linux, put it on a USB or open it in a virtual box, this is the screen you're met with. I do want to tell you, though, when you go into the boot screen, before you do anything, you're going to want to hit Function F2 and set your desired language, because out of the box, it comes in Turkish. So, I have set it to English. We've opened it up. You're met with a welcome screen right here. It says, as PZ GNU Linux developers, we hope you enjoy using PZ Linux. The following links will guide you while using PZ Linux. Please do not hesitate to inform about your experience, suggestions, and errors you have encountered. And down below, you've got the documents, you've got release notes, you've got the wiki, you've got a forum, you've got their telegram, PZ Linux bugs, start, join us, or home. And then down here, you have their social media, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, Insta, or YouTube. And, of course, you've got Show on Startup. We're going to go ahead and close out of this, and I'm going to open up their website. If you're interested in looking at PZ Linux, it's pzlinux.org. Right here, it scrolls through and tells you what's available at present. We are looking at the 2.2 KDE. It's not a release candidate anymore. And then you've got latest technology uses, quick and easy install. It's free. And then you've got their home, bugs about us, blog, their forum. Should you have any troubles, you can come over to the forum. Wikipedia, and then their downloads here. I will be sure to include this web address down below in the description. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And you'll notice it's got a real beautiful desktop when you boot into it. Now, if you right click, we can configure desktop and wallpaper. We'll move this into the center. And first thing I want to do is to see if they've got any other wallpapers. I like the one that they have. So you got your Regular KDE wallpapers, you've got some Turkish theme wallpapers, and then you've got, of course, the operating system. I want to try this one. That looks pretty. I'm going to go ahead and leave that, and we'll close out of that. You've got a bottom panel down here. It does have quite a bit of transparency, but you can still see pretty good. You've got date and time right here. You've got your hidden icons right here, which is your notifications, your clipboard, night color control, Bluetooth, keyboard indicator, and then, of course, KDE Connect. Now, if you are an Android user, you'll want to go over to the Play Store, download the KDE Connect application for your cell phone. And then once that's done, you can sync it up with your PC, and that way you can get notifications directly on your laptop or your desktop from your phone. You've got internet, USB, battery, and you've got your audio. And then, of course, if you right-click on the panel, you can edit the panel. It'll give you options right here. You can go ahead and make the panel a little bigger if you want, which is what I'm going to do. You can come over to more options on the right. Panel alignment. You can align it to the left, put it in the center, move it to the right. I'm just going to leave it to the left right now. And then visibility. You can have it always visible the way it is now. Auto hide. Windows can cover. Windows can go below. So you've got a lot of different options you can do with the panel right there. And then if you come all the way over to the right, add widgets. You can add several different widgets right here. You can go through, and if there's not any widgets on here that you like and you want to have, you can always go search and download for more. I'm just going to do a real quick test here for weather report. Drag it, drop it on the desktop, click configure. And what you'll do is go up here to where it says location, click choose, click NOAA, and then pick your location. Let's say Dallas, Texas. Search. Dallas Love Field, just pick it select and apply and it'll apply it over here and then all you got to do is come over here when you've got a regular looking background unlike mine so this one isn't real friendly and you've got your weather widget now if that's something you want you can put it there you can move it wherever you want to on the desktop and you're good to go and if you want to get rid of it you just come over click on the remove it disappears you're good to go so let's close out of that firefox we've already seen uh dolphin file manager let's go ahead and open that up Dolphin opens up, just a lightweight, quick, easy file manager. It stays out of your way and lets you get your work done. You've got your usual suspects over here, and then you've got your home folders right here. Now, if you would like to make these bigger, all you got to do is right-click in this open area, go to icon size, click on large, and they get bigger, and it makes it easier for you to see. So that's Dolphin File Manager. Let's go ahead and close. Then you've got system settings, and you go to appearance. 
right now we're running the breeze theme. You've got breeze dark, breeze twilight. Then you got Maya. I'm going to go ahead and switch it to breeze dark and apply. That makes everything a little darker. Now, if you're in here and none of these themes are appealing to you, you can go down here to get new global themes. Just click on that. Go up to recent and change that to show highest rated. Then it'll show your highest rated themes that you can get. Just click on one to install. Close it. And once it's done installing, you can come over here, click on it and set it as your default theme. Then you change your application styles if you want to, plasma styles, colors, window decorations, fonts. I'm going to go into adjust all fonts. Here you can select the fonts you want to use. If you want to change it, just click on it. Scroll down, pick the one you want. When you're done, click OK. I'm going to uncheck that. I am going to change the size of our fonts right now. Change that to 12. Click OK. And as you can see, it changed the size of the fonts across everything. Then you've got icons, cursors, font management, splash screen. You can go back. You've got workspace behavior, window management, shortcuts, startup and shutdown, notifications, users, applications, online accounts, power management, Bluetooth, color corrections, KDE Connect, and then, of course, system information. We're presently on an older Plasma version. It's 5.21.3, 64-bit OS. I have assigned it four processors on my AMD Ryzen 5. Memory, I've got 2.9 gigabytes of RAM issued to the machine. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Now let's open up the app menu. I'm going to go to console real quick. I want to see if they have HTOP installed. They do not. Let's see if they have top, which they do. Let's go ahead and make that bigger. Our CPUs, we're using a little under 4%. And I've got three gigabytes of RAM issued to this machine. And at present, we're using 360 megabytes of that. So that's not too bad at all. So I'm going to go ahead and close out a console. That's actually really light. We can go up to applications, development. You've got Cuttlefish, Plasma Engine Explorer, QT Designer, Mathematics, Science, Games. Install more applications if you want. Graphics. you got GIMP out of the box. LibreOffice Draw. Internet. You've got Firefox. KDE Connect. Multimedia. You got VLC Media Player, Office, LibreOffice is installed out of the box, Settings, of course, System, and then Utilities, Arc, Emoji, Captain, Kate, KCalc, Yali. Now, what I am going to do is where it says Install More Applications, let's click on that. It's not letting me access the Discover Software Center. So I don't know if that's because we're in a virtual environment or it's because of the operating system itself. But that was a quick look at PZ Linux. Tell me what you think. It's KDE. It's a beautiful distribution. Uh, we do have a little problem with the software center, but I'm thinking once you got it installed and it got a chance to update, you would be okay. But let me know what you think about it. Is it something you might download, throw on a USB, put in a virtual machine and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video and I will see you in the next video.